Welcome back to Roadrunner Review, guys. My name is Ben. If you're not familiar, I'm a car enthusiast. I love to review cars, I love to drive cars, and I love to share the content I can create. So please subscribe to my channel, uh, click the like button below, and also comment below and let me know how I'm doing. Now today I am in Houston, Texas, and I will be driving the RT version of the 2019 Dodge Challenger, which is behind me. Now this car has 375 horsepower and 410 foot-pound torque. Uh, this is, if you're not familiar with Dodge, is a American-made manufacturer that they basically produces awesome vehicles with tons and tons of horsepower. Not to mention the uh, ACR Dodge Viper and also the upgraded trim of this model, which is the Demon Hellcat, which produces over 800 horsepower. But today we're still reviewing a big V8 and I'm gonna tell you the reasons why you should consider buying a Dodge Challenger over the other muscle cars. Um, the front of the car is very muscular, very aggressive. It's the classic muscle car feel. The reason why you're attracted to this car, the reason why you're probably clicking on this video is to get more information. But right off the bat, the number one reason why I like this car is it's in a way unique. A lot of the other muscle, uh, modern muscle cars that are on the market, the Mustang, the Camaro, don't stay 100% true to kind of the form that they look to. I think this design is one of the most spot on designs to what the classic car um, looked like. Now, if you're not familiar, the old Dodge Charger ran from around 1973 to around the 1980s, and they discontinued it and it started back up in 2008. This car that you see today was re-brought back in 2015 and has been slightly refreshed all the way up until 2020 when they introduced a wide body kit for uh, the Hellcat and the Demon. Now, what I do like on the 2015 refresh is the LED daytime running lights that they have up front along with the blinker. Now this part, the two part piece grill in the front, really looks similar to the old school version that was in the 70s. And also with the big long gated hood with the sharp aggressive lines and the bulky top is definitely from the 70s classic muscle car movement. Then down below you have the large uh, splitter that uh, basically uh, just gives a little bit more aerodynamics, a little bit more of that, uh, that aggressive look to it. Now along the side, you have two 20 inch rims that come stock. I do love that they upgraded the, the look of the wheel. They gave it a little bit more of that beefier kind of muscle look. Dodge has been very aggressive on letting people know that they are trying to be more of the progressive cool brand, um, sponsoring with the Fast and Furious shows and the commercials, how they have to do it, drifting through the commercials. They really drive home that they want this to be a true packaged sports car. Um, one thing I do want to say in regards to the car is, you know, this isn't necessarily a performance track car in my opinion. You definitely can't take this on the track and perform with it. However, if you really wanted that type of car, I would upgrade more to the Viper. Uh, this car, I feel, is more of a street king car. They have the Dodge Demon that's over 800 horsepower in a street production car, which is very impressive. This car, the RT model, um, comes in right around 350 horsepower. It does sit a little bit higher than what I typically like to see in a sports car. However, you know, the way the car performs, it does make sense. You can not upgrade to get a different suspension in the track, uh, the track package and stuff like that. But um, the way it kind of just stands right now, it's a little bit high, but it looks good. Very clean. Um, as we make our way to the back, you do on the back have uh, the rear uh, wing spoiler that comes stock on some of the cars. And you do have the upgraded LED lights back here, which are very, very clean. Very classic muscle car look, and I think Dodge did an excellent job executing this. Um, the rest of the back is pretty much minimal. You have the dual exhaust at the bottom, which as you can tell, it has a really low RPM rumble, um, especially when you have, as you upgrade it to the different trim lines, to the Hellcat, Hellcat Red Eye, or even the Demon, it just gets more and more beefier with the motors. <laughs> About the performance and the specs of the car in a bit um, but for now that's it for the exterior i do like the car i love the way it looks i love the way it, it, it just it stands it looks at a stoplight easily noticeable a lot of people like them because it just it's a little bit more larger than your average muscle car a uh, modern muscle car like the mustang's a little bit more smaller the camaro's a little bit more smaller this challenger is a lot more beefier a lot more uh, better presence on the street um, let's go ahead and dig into the interior now. All right, guys, now we're in the interior of the car. Um, so 
just gonna kind of go over everything that I like about it and I don't like about it. Starting off with the things I like. I like the space, the amount of space you get, the amount of headroom, the amount of the cushion of the seat and the amount that you just have inside is excellent. I love that everything is just straightforward. I love that Dodge enlarged the screen, made it a little bit bigger, a lot more brighter for people to see. Very easy to uh, go from the radio to media, climate, um, you can even go to all the apps. Very easy to read. Bluetooth capabilities to connect to your phone. Um, very easy just to uh, use over the previous generations. Um, I do like the digital dash, which um, shows your speedometer, shows how fast you're going, the RPMs, the fuel uh, gauge as well. Um, on the steering wheel, it's a bit oversized, but it's definitely good. It feels good in the hands. You have the leather all the way around. Um, it looks like you have the Bluetooth uh, capability. You also have cruise control capability too as well. Um, very easy to use. What I don't like is the accent silver pieces that are around uh, most of the car. I'm not sure what it is, but it feels like plastic to the touch. Um, and what I also don't like up here is that there's a lot of play in the dash. It's, it just feels like a lot of space up here that don't know if it's used properly or not. It most likely is, but it's just, has a lot of play and even going to the headliner the headliner itself just bounces um, I noticed you know depending on how you drive you get a lot of that movement and that flex shows up when you're driving the car um, I do like that they have the black interior um, uh, or a headliner all the way throughout that standard I, I love that in cars because it makes the car feel more of a cockpit but um, the back seat is somewhat spacious it's bigger than the Mustang um, but it, it definitely I wouldn't say a, a oversized person to be able to fit back there. You could squeeze them back there, but they're not going to be comfortable. They do have a little bit more headroom, which is nice because the way the Challenger roofline shapes is a little bit different than some of the other uh, modern sports cars, uh, modern muscle sports cars. As far as storage, you have a good amount of storage here. Um, two cup holders, actually four cup holders total, two in the middle and then two on the doors. Um, and the trunk itself, which we'll take a look at in, in a bit, is an excellent size. Um, you can basically fit as much as <laughs> uh, three or four luggage boxes back there, which I'll show you in a second. All right, so now that's it for the interior, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and take this car for a drive and uh, show you how it performs, because that's where you're going to be spending most of your money. Now, one thing I do want to mention, which we're getting ready to test out right now, is that the zero to 60 isn't fantastic, but it has a lot of noise. They're gonna hear you from around the block in this car. And that's why I feel like this car is a, a street king. It's just one of those cars from light to light. It just smokes. Um, to be able to have the drag option on here, on get bigger, wider tires for traction, even the all wheel drive uh, option to be able to really get traction on taking off, doing those launches. Um, just definitely an impressive car. As I am driving the car, you do get some of that, uh, the sense that this car is heavy. It's not a light car by no means, you know. Again, you're not gonna be doing the, the cornering and all that stuff and the track performance on this. You could upgrade a lot and, you know, light the car up a lot to be able to really get the most out of it. I would just recommend getting a different car because the purpose of this car, in my opinion, is a little bit more of kind of that flex, straight line uh, speed, just what these muscle cars were founded on. Got the windows fully up. You can still hear the exhaust very nicely. Oh yeah. When you really step on the gas, it really wants to sing. Woo, 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 shit. You can tell this car has a bunch of pickup. Um, you, you really aren't gonna be in no slow car in this vehicle. This car too, you get the low rumble at the 2000 RPMs. Very, very good. I have all the windows up in the car right now and you can still hear it in the cabin. Even if you're playing music, it's just a good kind of background noise to let you know that, you know, this car is going. I think a lot of people are attracted to this muscle car on uh, just what you can do and how you can customize it too. Uh, many aftermarket parts are available. Um, as far as the parts themselves, usually, typically, depending on what it is, is easy sourceable and relatively inexpensive compared to uh, German or Japanese auto manufacturer parts. Um, so the longevity of the car is good. As far as reliability, I have heard that some people complain about the motor. However, you know, I always think reliability comes down to the ownership. 
ownership before you own it and then also wait while you own it of how you're taking care of the car. Sometimes there's things that happen in the car that are out of your control. I, I like the idea of this car. It's, it's, it's a reason why a lot of people buy it, especially here in America. Um, it's just easily priced, it's entry level. You can pick up a used one, 2019 or 2018, right under the $30,000 and that's the RT. If you want the Hellcat uh, uh, version, you're definitely gonna put a lot more down. I would add roughly around $10,000 onto that price range. However, you could probably pick it up a little bit better than the mid 30s. And if you want the Demons, of course, you're gonna be spending some dough for those. Those are over 800 horsepower and easily just a monster of a car. Um, one day, hopefully, I can get one of those on the channel. One of my favorite things about it is the fact that you could just choose any of the models and really be satisfied besides the V6. Some people like the V6, but I think it takes the muscle out of the muscle car, um, which is the whole point of me wanting to buy the car. So I wouldn't even consider um, the V6 as an option. Here we go. There we go, yes. So this car just, amazing car to drive. Have a lot of fun. Just going in a straight line too at that. I'm not doing a lot of maneuvering as you can tell. And Dodge did a really good job of putting a lot of horsepower in this car to really give that feeling. So when you let off the gas, it, with the loud exhaust and the combination of how the body, the body roll of the car feels, you just feel engaged to want to continue going and really kind of push it out. Now, one thing I will say, because this is the real wheel drive version of the Challenger, the back end does want to kind of get loose a little bit, um, which could be fun. You take the trash control off, you're in an open environment, or if you're really good driving, you can just kind of let it loose. It definitely holds itself on its own. And with that added power, you're able to hold that position in either a drift, a power slide, or whatever you're doing, and really kind of control it. Now, I will say that this is a heavy car. It's not light, um, as nobody would assume it's light, but it has that body roll. Um, so when you are cornering, maneuvering, and stuff like that, you do get a lot of that that, that, that feeling that goes all the way to the steering wheel. Um, it's not nothing too big to complain about. It's just more of an understanding that this car isn't a competitor to more of a track focused car that is you know lighter weight has the all-wheel drive a little bit more of that stability and control better braking and overall just it's just going to outperform that doesn't mean that this car isn't a successful car and it's a waste of time it just means it has a different recipe than some of the other car manufacturers are producing and i like that it kind of it's true to the identity of what a muscle car is it's not really a practical car you know you can't drive a muscle car and think that i want to squeeze you know 30 miles a gallon out of it so why think that you're going to be a, a true competitor on some of the other things that are focused on those like a track car so this is more of that street performance that i'm racing from stoplight to stoplight i am wanting to just tear up a town type of car that's what this is it turns heads people can hear it from blocks away it's a, a very beastly car and this is just the rt version as you can hear in the cabin, because I'm sure the exhaust note is coming on camera. Uh, as soon as you go into the Hellcat, the, the Hellcat Red Eye, or even the Demon, I just drove past the church, <laughs> but the Demon, um, it, it's gonna rumble, it's gonna shake the town, it's gonna shake you, your passenger. It's a, it's a definitely unique car. That the braking can be upgraded. I feel that they should come standard with a little bit better braking system. However, you can get the upgraded models or trims uh, for a Challenger and it will come with bigger, better brakes. But as far as just the base RT, I do feel like they do need a little bit more because there is a lot of play uh, when you are slowing down. And this car right now has around 15,000 miles. Um, not sure how it is serviced because it's not my vehicle, but at the same time, I'm assuming that everything's properly done. And if you do want to upgrade your brakes, there is options from Dodge and aftermarket options you can do as well to really get a better stopping power for this vehicle. Uh, because it's heavy, I do highly recommend uh, investing in brakes. Um, um, but I'm just curious what people are actually seeking that is going to be the best in their eyes. Because even though you're going to get a car with more horsepower, it doesn't mean it's a better car for you and what you want to do with it. And I think there's nothing more true than what Dodge is doing right now by producing so many different options, so many different trims for people. If you guys are thinking about purchasing 
a Challenger, please let me know what model that you're thinking of. Because I'm driving the RT1, which is the base model V8, but they also got the GT uh, V6. They also got Scat Pack, uh, Hellcat, the Hellcat Red Eye, Hellcat Wide Body, uh, the Demon. Uh, the list goes on and on. And on top of that, a lot of people don't know, but you can also option out to get the all-wheel drive on some of the newer models. So um, this car with even a manual transmission with the all-wheel drive, that's an interesting combination. Um, so how do you or how would you uh, option out your, your Challenger if you were to buy one? Just out of curiosity, comment below. That's it for my video guys, I appreciate you watching. So please subscribe to my channel, it helps support me out, get more videos like this on the, the channel. Please like and comment below and let me know um, how everything's going. So I am working to try to get more and more cars to you and on the channel um, so I can grow this thing and become better at it every single day. Well I appreciate you for watching. Um, have a good one. a couple times you might have uh, daydreams about just wanting to <laughs> hear that exhaust sound.